Hey guys, I wanted to show y'all a modification I made to my Hobie trolling motor. So the trolling motor I'm using is a White Snake 20, not White Snake, <laughs> that's an 80 fan, uh, Water Snake uh, 24 pound thrust motor, which fits fine in my 2013 Hobie Outback. Uh, I know if you guys have PAs, uh, the 30 pound thrust prowler from Bass Pro, or I think the 30 pound thrust motors will fit in that cassette plug area where the drive goes in, but they will not fit in an Outback. So you have to get the smaller motor, which is fine. I average about 4.1 miles an hour using my motor at full speed. And then um, let me show you one other thing that really makes your battery life last. First of all, a lithium battery, while very expensive, is, I think, a very good thing to have on the kayak. Number one, it's way light. I have a 100 pound, I'm sorry, a 100 amp hour battery. It weighs 25 pounds. By comparison, my, uh, I think, 50 amp hour battery weighs 48 so there you go the other thing that's good about the lithium battery is once you drain it down beyond 50 percent um, it does not lose power like the sealed lead acid batteries do uh, it's a lithium deep cycle battery i got it for 700 on amazon i'll show you what it looks like in a minute So this is the battery, um, if you guys can see that, it's EWT battery. Um, and what I've done is I've connected both my trolling motor connection with the 50 amp hour, or 50, whatever the fuse is, 50 amp fuse. And then I've also got my fish finder and lights on a separate connection. Here's the second connection with the 3 amp fuse in it that's in line. So the first thing I did was use the regular cassette uh, and use a staple gun to staple some foam padding around the side that makes it fit a little more snug in place. The other thing I did was instead of using the the stock cassette plastic tabs that pop off real easy uh, I got a hollow aluminum bar from Lowe's, cut it to fit, I think six inches, ground down the ends of the bar to fit in the Hobie uh, feet where the kayak is, and then to make sure that bar stays in place, I have used a cotter pin, a small cotter pin, uh, drilled a hole right towards the end of where the cassette is, and put the cotter pin through the hole, as you can see. I've also epoxied uh, around there to make it a little more waterproof. Um, so that's the first thing. Second thing I've done is I've taken an old cutting board and cut two little pieces in the bottom and used it for a stop and to keep it from rotating when the motor's in use. Uh, and I've epoxied both of those to the bottom and top of the cassette. Right now I'm setting it, uh, I've got a clamp on it and I'm just getting the epoxy set. If you decide to use this cutting board, I recommend you sand down both sides of the, uh, well, one side of the cassette and the other corresponding side of the cutting board, the PVC board, so that it has more surface area to grab and it's smoother so that the glue holds better. Uh, if you ever have to make an adjustment, the epoxy will eventually pop off. You just get a screwdriver in there and move it around and the epoxy will come off. Um, but that's a, a tip as well. To have a perfect depth for where you need it to be, 
he cut a PVC pipe and ran it down the pipe, I mean ran it down the shaft, and so that it fits perfectly every time and there's no movement. I've also epoxied the bottom of the cutting board to that pipe and that pipe is good protection and it also makes sure that the cassette stays in the right height every time. So if you use the metal bar like I did, you can't obviously run the shaft right through the middle of the cassette, which I think is actually fine because what I've done is offset where the shaft enters the cassette and it makes it easier to get in and out uh, on the boat while you're on the water. You can see how I have it offset. There's the motor and then there's the shaft. Like most of you, I have filled the cassette with expansion foam and that makes it a little more soundproof and a little more rugged, I think, uh, and lets less water get in as well. Finally, um, once you have it set in place, I recommend you put some epoxy in the side of the metal bar so that you can make sure water doesn't enter the cassette while you're on the water. You can just lean it a little bit and it comes right out. Lean it back down, put it in, and then push it down and it locks in place. Instead of using the on-off switch and the five power mode that's on the motor, I've taken that off and just made this little box that is a variable power box. One long line goes to this long line right here, goes to the trolling motor itself, and I'll show you that setup once it's done. The other line, my short one, goes to the power. And I've used these Quick Connect SAEs to connect uh, all that together. So back to the power box. Um, I have it mounted on my Yak using a RAM ball mount. And I like to run the wires through the Yak so this is the power wire I have connected right here and you can see it's got one of those waterproof nipple things that you can tighten down and make a waterproof seal and then I run that wire through the kayak to here the main crate I mean the main uh, hatch and I've got a little battery holder and I've also got one of those yak power packs that I use for lights and fish finder. But uh, everything connects up here up front and the battery is 25 pounds so it doesn't really weigh the front of the yak down uh, that much. And I, th I just like the batteries and electronics inside the yak as opposed to outside, less clutter, less things for fish to get, pull things around, that kind of thing. So I've got a smaller battery hooked up in there to show you guys how it powers. There's a, I don't know what kind of meter this is, but when you turn it on, it'll tell you how much you have, how much you're using. 100% power, less than that. And then the switch reverse forward. And so I usually just keep the wires tucked there. I left a lot of extra in case I needed to move something later. And then here's the motor going. If you decide to go with the variable power arrangement that I talked about earlier, all you need coming out of the motor is the black wire and the red wire. The blue wire you can just shove down into the shaft if you'd like. The other thing I do is I use the motor stop on here just to some extra uh, stoppage and I tighten it down up next against the cutting board piece. So the other thing I did was uh, I drilled a hole 
through the shaft here you can see for purposes of putting on a cap. So what I did here was I found this pipe connection that's a reducing uh, elbow and then put it on top of the shaft and then just used a stainless steel screw and washer and wing nut to keep that in place so that it doesn't move. Attached to this part right here will be a chair tip, a rubber chair tip that acts as a waterproofing mechanism and cover. So there's the chair tip. I've cut it down the middle to make it easier to get on and off, but it'll fit on there fine. And drilled a hole right here for the wires to come out, and then I'm going to gorilla glue or gorilla tape this onto the connection. Alright, the Gorilla Tape has been applied to the rubber chair tip and as you can see that moves a little bit but it stays in place and the chair tip doesn't move. Now what I'm going to do is affix the SAE Quick Connect connector to the motor using um, heat, heat shrink splice uh, things and those are right here. These things are a little bit expensive but they are the easiest thing to use to connect two wires together plus they also shrink down once you crimp them on this metal piece and then there's some glue inside that melts around it that makes it waterproof. Um, so they're very good. You can get some on Amazon. Yeah, uh, for the the other thing I would suggest is use very uh, the heaviest gauge wire you can get away with. This is a 10 uh, gauge wire, I believe, 10 to 12, uh, and that's what these fit. So I recommend you get the more wire because the less heat builds up as you're using the motor. Here's the SAE tip that I'm using. I order uh, extension cords on Amazon or eBay that are got the heavier wire and they also come with these covers which is nice to keep the salt water or fresh water out and then splice them onto the wires using the heat connector or splice clips and then uh, use a heat gun or a hair dryer or even an open flame to shrink those down all you do is use a wire stripper to strip the ends of the, both the wires and then crimp the wires on each side and that makes them connect. And then there's a metal piece in here that conducts the electricity between the two wires as well. So this is a heat gun I got at uh, Harbor Freight which they have the best prices on tools and parts. And so I put it on number two and watch these things shrink down. You can, you can see the glue melting around the wire as it shrinks down in heat and that gives it the watertight seal. So when the motor's in, that is how far down it comes in the water. It's still higher up than the Mirage Drive, so it doesn't drag bottom as much.